He's not this thing that's far away. He's right here. He's yours. And I'm his. He's mine. That's your attitude. He's me. He's mine. I'm his. We're together in this. Praise God. The Godhead is Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. The Trinity, which is, you know, I, I know what they were trying to do. I know their purpose. The people who created the Trinity were not trying to be rude. They were not trying to be mean or evil. They were trying to describe the nature of God. They just didn't do a very good job. And even they, back then, said, we don't really understand this. We're just trying to put this thing together. And they used something that's not in the scripture to do it. What I'm using is 100% Biblical. One, 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 one. It's all one. It's in there. I'm not giving you any of my opinion. I'm not creating some way for you to understand so that you can get it better by naming some new thing. I'm giving you the word of God. And it's clear. And we're going to be without excuse. God is going to expect you to know him. I'm spitting all over the place. I love it. I'm glad there's nobody here. Whoo! If you want to know him, then you got to know him. You can't, you know, I heard a pastor preach one time, you know, I know who Drew Bledsoe is. Well, he used a different football player. I use, uh, uh, if I walked up to Drew, oh, Drew, what's up, bro? You know, let's go hang out. What's up, Drew? He's going to be like, okay. Hey, don't really want to hug around or something, okay. Because he don't know me like that. I know his name. I know what he does. But just because I know those things, I can't say I know him because he doesn't know me. Now, when I get up close and personal with Drew, me and Drew get to hanging out. We go out to dinner. He meets my wife. I meet his family. We get close. Then I can say maybe I know him. And when he sees me, he's like, hey, how you doing, John Michael? Because he knows who I am. There are so many people right now who think they know Jesus. And because they know his name and they know he's God and know the Bible. They say, I know you. But you know what it says in Matthew chapter 7? It says those people who didn't understand him and didn't follow him. He says, I don't know you. You know me, but I don't know you. And he requires us to know him. That's why this Bible study is so important. He requires us to understand that he is one and not anything else. And I only say three because it's mentioned twice. But there, there is a whole group of people who have this emphasis on three. You know how I know they emphasize three? Because tri means three. Trinity means three. They have these three separate entities and they separate God. We cannot separate God. We've got to keep God together. Let's keep going. I'm almost done. Well, this one's my favorite. When, my, when I read this, I, I think I got down and, and wept. I think I was very nervous when I read this because this is so important. Colossians 2, 8 and 9. I want everybody to go there. Colossians 2, 8, 9 and 10. I want everybody to go there because this is one of those. Remember I call them hammer down? Hammer down? This is one of those bang the gavel scriptures. This is one of those hammer down scriptures that you can't ignore. You can't deny. There's, I don't care if you're a pastor. I don't care if you're a theologian. I don't care if you've been studying Bible for a hundred years. You cannot touch the scripture. I don't care who you are. Aren't you glad to get a hold of this? You're going to have access to this scripture. I suggest you use it. I had somebody call me Manuel. Brother Manuel called me up and said, Pastor, there's some people at my house. And they say that the oneness of God is a cult. <laughs> let me tell you why that's funny the oneness of God is just a doctrine it's not a, it's not a group of people I mean I can understand you say this church is a cult or that church is a cult and, and, and I go by control when people are trying to control you know Alyssa okay now you gotta, you're got you in this church you, know, you can't be hanging out with anybody you, you, you stay over here you stay away from those people now there's a difference between separating from sin and separating from your own family if I'm telling you look you need to stop talking to mom and dad and you stop talking to your sisters, anybody who don't go to church, you need to stop talking with those people. You just talk to me and listen to me. And everything I say is gospel. And everything I say you do. And you're going to be all right. If you don't, you're going to burn in hell. All of a sudden, that, that's a cult. See, I don't tell you. You notice, I don't tell you. to. I just focus on the Lord. Don't focus on me. Don't listen to me. Listen to God. I'm, if I give you a message from God, then listen to that. But they said that the, the oneness of God is a cult. Um, the oneness of God is just a biblical principle. I don't know how it can be a cult itself. A cult has to be a group of people. It was funny. I don't know. Maybe you don't get it. But he said, give me some scriptures. So I gave him this one because this is the best. This is the hammer down. Are you ready for it? It says, beware. Now, automatically, we should be like, automatic. Beware.
beware. That's a warning. God is giving you a warning. It says, beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit as the traditions of man and as the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. Woo! First of all, it's talking about man. Man wants to just tell you whatever you want to hear so that you'll stick around. That's not this church. I am not going to sit here and tell you what you want to hear so you'll stick around. I'm going to give you the word of God so you can fall in love with God and stick around because you love him. And if the world becomes more enticing to someone in this church, they might leave. Because they want to do things their own way instead of God's way. And you know what? I'm not going to change what I'm teaching out of fear. I don't have the authority to do that. So it says right there, first it's talking about a warning. Don't be spoiled by man or by philosophy or traditions of men. Now, if you're a Catholic, please forgive me. Don't get, if you, are you a Catholic? Praise the Lord. I'm not saying Catholics are bad. My mom's a Catholic. I always use that to give, you know how people always say, you know, oh, I'm, I'm not prejudiced of Indians. My great, great grandmother's a Cherokee. <laughs> white as snow. Oh, I'm telling you, just white as snow. Everybody's Cherokee. <laughs> oh, I'm not prejudiced. My best friend is black. If you got to say that, there's something wrong. <laughs> but this idea of tradition of men, that's what the Catholic Church is all about. You look at the Catholic Church and you look, I have a Bible study from the Catholic Church. One of their teachings is, you're, you're too ignorant to understand the Word of God, so don't even try, just do what we say. Don't even, you're just too ignorant. I mean, literally, you're too ignorant to understand. So don't mess with it. There's things that they're doing that are all traditional and have nothing, for example, let's see, the Pope is God on earth. There's only one God that was on this earth and what's his name? Jesus and he reconciled the world onto himself. I don't know no Pope, don't get me, oh I'm not mad at him, I'm not mad. I'm not mad at the Pope or the Catholic Church, but it just came to me. There's only one man that reconciled the world onto himself. You know, I would feel a little uncomfortable saying, I'm God on earth because I didn't reconcile nothing onto me. No man should feel comfortable saying that. I'm not mad at the Catholic Church. I'm just, that just fired me up for a second. God on earth. There was only one. How many? One. There was. How many popes there have been? Does that been that many gods on earth? Don't think so. That's just part of it. They tell these, uh, come on, how far should I go? Don't be having sex. Don't be getting married. As a priest. Because Paul did it. But if you can't contain yourself, it is better to marry than to burn with lust or burn in hell because you can't contain your lust. It's better to marry. But you get these men, tell them they can't marry. They got all these lustful urges. What do you have? A whole clergy full of pedophiles. And that's fact. That's not, I'm not even putting people down. That's what, but why? Because they're not following the Bible. They're following traditions of men. So that's day, we, beware, we can't do that because it messes us up. So that's my thing on Catholic Church. I got a whole lot more, but I'm not here to bash the Catholic Church. I'm here to show the truth of the Word of God. I'm here to show the truth of the Word of God. Thank you, Shirley. She's with us. Praise God. Then it says, this is, this is the best part, here it comes. Verse 9. For in him dwell all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Who's him? How do we know? It doesn't say Jesus up there. How do I know? I'm giving you a hint. The verse before, if you ever want to check something, look at the verse before and the verse after. Don't be taking these things in the middle. I could give you two verses to have you kill yourself. <laughs> Judith hung himself. One scripture. Let me go get another one. Do ye likewise. See ya. So whatever. Girls, you want to preach? <laughs> Typical wife going to correct me while I'm preaching. I'm on a roll, girl. You better leave me alone. Go, what is it? Go and do thy likewise. If you, want, if you want the exact wordage. So I can teach you to kill you. You got to look at the scripture before and after. The scripture before, which is Colossians 2, 7 probably, tells us who we're talking about. Okay, I'm sorry. It's right there then. Uh, even even the, ver the verse right before it tells us who we're talking about. 
Christ. And it says, for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. What is the Godhead? The Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. That's what they call the Trinity, the Godhead. But the Bible says that the Godhead or the Trinity is all found in Jesus' body. Mm -hmm. Where's my gavel? Boom, case closed. All the fullness of the Godhead. What Godhead means is the state of being God. If you didn't hear, if you heard every other scripture I said and were sitting there going, nope, that's wrong, that's wrong. Check this one. Tell me this was wrong. Show me how this was. Please call me. My number is 505-870-6344. If you can prove this is wrong, show me. I want to see it. No one has ever been able to show me that this is incorrect. It says, in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Within Jesus Christ is everything you need to know about God. Now, if you were to say that Jesus is the Trinity, you're good. That would be a correct teaching. But to say that Jesus is the second person of the Trinity. who Lord, really? The very next scripture is going to blow that away because it says, and ye are complete in him. You are complete. See, people, oh, Father, and oh, Holy Spirit, you only need a, you're complete in him. Whenever you pray, pray to Jesus. You got everything you need when you pray to Jesus. But then it says, which is the head. Where is the head located? First or second? You sure? Because it says, the head. Jesus is first. Not second. Who's the only one that would want to put Jesus second? The only person that wants to substitute Jesus would be Satan. Now I'm not saying that Trinitarians are a bunch of Satan worshippers or nothing. I'm not saying that. I'm just telling you that's how the devil works. He's slick. He just needs to twist just a little. He's not going to. He doesn't mind that you pray. He can just get you to pray an empty faithless prayer. He doesn't mind that you go to church as long as he can distract you and get you to go against your sisters and your brothers or go against the pastor or cause division. He doesn't care that you read your Bible as long as he can keep you confused. He's not afraid of those things. Listen, it says he is the head of all principalities and power. He is the king of kings and the lord of lords. He's not second to none. Now wait a minute. The Trinity calls Jesus the second person in the Trinity. Those are just some of the simple ways to be able to determine if something is biblical or not. You are complete in him. He is first. Are you getting to, do you feel like you know him better now? Do you feel like you know him better now? I'm asking you. Can you give me a nod if yes. If not just. Because you need to know him. He requires for you to know him. Let's stand up. Maybe if you come to this piano. This Bible is so clear. This Bible is so concise. If you're going to use a number. And this is, this is just a portion. I'm going to bring in. We're doing this for two more, two more Wednesdays. I'm going to bring in a circle. And it's, it's, it's called the oneness wheel. And it's got all these titles. God is a mediator, Jesus is the mediator. And as all the scriptures that said in the wheel, all the scriptures says Jesus is the mediator, and all the scriptures says God is the mediator. It says God is the rock, Jesus is the rock. And all the scriptures, that it goes all the way around, and all points to the same God. If you're going to use a number to describe the nature of God, the only number it can be is one. And I'm not just, I just don't have one scripture. There are Tons. I mean, I read scripture now and say, oh, there's another one in scripture right there. Another evidence of the oneness of God. This is something that if you want to be in line with God, then you need to understand this and be proud of it. I am a oneness apostolic. I am a oneness Christian. I only believe in the oneness of God because that's what the Bible teaches. There's only one and I want to be closer to him. I want to be tight with God. I need God. Without God, I'm in trouble. I've got to be intimate with him. I've got to be close to him. He's got to know me and I've got to know him because if he doesn't know me, what I know doesn't even matter. Let's stand. Oh, praise God. We have a lot more to do on this subject. There's, there's more I'm going to show you. 
I want you to pray that God continue to give you a revelation of his biblical description of himself. He gave you the instructions to know what he's all about. I want you to pray that you will be able to understand that. Because there are scriptures that mention Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. They're all there. But this is what you need to know. You need to put them in the proper context. There is a Father, there is a Son, and there is a Holy Ghost. While my wife picks a selection, there's one more thing I want to tell you. The Trinitarian concept defends itself by, remember when I said that the Trinitarians do not believe in three gods? I'm being fair to them. Because I know, I've studied, I've talked to them. They don't believe in three gods. Their theology teaches there's three gods to people. It confuses them. God's not an author of confusion. But they are not fair to us who are oneness apostolics or oneness people. I'll tell you why. Because they call us, and people online pay attention because this is a key word that you'll understand possibly because you've heard it before. They will call us Jesus only people. And what they teach is that we don't believe in the Father. We don't believe in the Holy Ghost. We only believe in Jesus. That is 1,000% untrue and it's unfair to them when I've been fair to them. They do not believe in three gods. That's just what they teach. We do not negate the existence of the Father. I believe in the Father all day long and I believe in the Holy Ghost. I just help pray her through to the Holy Ghost. Obviously I believe in the Holy Ghost. It would be ridiculous to say I don't believe in the Holy Ghost. I'm full of the Holy Ghost. I love the Holy Ghost. I love the power of the Holy Ghost. Let it be known that this church believes in the Holy Ghost. I believe in the father he's my daddy he's my father on father's day every father's day I preach to my father in heaven and I say Jesus I'm glad I know you're my daddy we believe in the father we believe in the Holy Ghost we just put him in the right place that's all we put him in the right place according to the word of God now you can call us Jesus' name. That would be okay because the Bible says, do all things, all deeds in the name of Jesus. I'm a Jesus' name believer. I believe in the name of Jesus. I believe in the power of the name of Jesus. We are Jesus' name, not Jesus only. Anybody ever calls you Jesus only, they don't know what they're talking about. The one thing that's true about Jesus only is that all we need is Jesus. Because when we have Jesus, we have the Father, we have the Son, and we have the Holy Ghost. You are complete in Him. We just read it. Yes, I believe in Jesus. And I know He's all I need. But don't call me Jesus only. Don't think that I can negate these important elements of God. That would be unbiblical and unscriptural. I want you to come to these altars right now and pray that you know Jesus better. Pray that you understand Him. These altars are open. I want you to come. I know we already had someone get the Holy Ghost. We've got four people getting baptized today. But I still want you to come and say, God, I'm so glad I know you better right now as a result of this teaching. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, I love you. Oh, I know you're the Father. I know you're the Son. And I know you're the Holy Ghost. We're going to prove that next Wednesday through the Scripture. But right now, we're just going to know that you are one. If there's a number that I have to use to describe the nature of God, that number is going to be one because that's the one the Bible uses. That's the number the Bible uses. And that's the number one. My God is one. Hero Israel, the Lord our God.